with an illustrious career spanning more than two decades, our chef on Flavors of Europe today is a true culinary artist. Not only is he the consulting chef for the Michelin plated Indus, he also is the co-founder for the very famous Street Stories in Bangalore. His work speaks volumes globally and he's none other than Chef Nishan Chaube. Hello Chef, welcome to the show, Flavors of Europe. How are you doing? Thank you so much, Samir, for the wonderful introduction. And we couldn't be happier spending our afternoon with a chef who continues to redefine the Indian culinary scene. But there's one thing we're curious to know. What inspired you to be a chef? It's very interesting, Samir, how I got into this field. Consider my entire family has a teaching background. People mostly pursued either government services or became chartered accountants or even IS. You can imagine how my parents reacted when they heard that I wanted to become a chef. <laughs> but I took their concerns in my stride, continued building my passion and reached where I am today. Through memories, it feels nothing short of being a film story. Yaar. And that's a story that's going to fetch you many awards. But tell me one thing. How did being recognized by Michelin add a sense of responsibility to your profession? Of course, every chef's dream of winning a stamp of approval from Michelin. Talking about how it has shaped my journey. It has been a real game changer, yaar. I started pushing my creative limits, playing around with different ingredients. And even now, I still see myself a curious learner. Impressive. For someone like you who loves experimenting, it's great to see you setting higher benchmarks every year. But as someone who has seen the industry ebb and flow, how has it evolved since you first started? What changes have you observed in terms of trends, techniques or ingredients? The culinary landscape has undergone quite a transformation since I first stepped into the kitchen. One of the most significant changes I have witnessed is the constant evolution of culinary trends. There's this beautiful progression of traditional and modern flavors that has become more popular over the years. But you know what's so endearing? Indians have started traveling a lot more and they've got a lot more exposure now. So Sami, let me tell you, so this shift is very interesting. It's not just about taste anymore. It's about our entire sensory experience too. Now, ingredients have become a playground for innovation. The emphasis on locally sourced seasonal produce has grown substantially. Sustainability is no more longer a buzzword, but a fundamental aspect of culinary ethos across the world, especially in the European Union. It is inspiring to see how the industry is embracing a more conscious approach to cooking. I couldn't agree more. In fact, I see my own family slowly turning towards experimental style of Indian cuisine. Which brings me to my next question. Is there any signature dish that you're proud of creating? Anything I whip up in the kitchen feels like my own little masterpiece. But if I have to highlight a couple of gems, it has to be the focaccia naan and the beautiful salivating chocolate rasmalai, which I usually make using the best butter from France and best chocolates from Belgium. These dishes are the real stars on the menu and honestly, my personal favorites too. You just mentioned two very, as the current generation would say, drool-worthy dishes. And correct me if I'm wrong, but with the dishes you suggested, it seems like you really enjoy baking. Samir, how true you are. I really do enjoy baking. In fact, I started visiting this particular bakery to learn the tricks, hacks of baking the perfect breads. Since then, there has been absolutely no looking back. Your story takes me back to my childhood days when after school, we all friends visited the local bakeries to enjoy freshly baked khari. That old school charm is something that's out of this world. But for you, chef, from the bylanes of your college to visiting the world, you've traveled a lot. Which country is your favorite and what skills did you pick up while working there? Sam, you won't even believe. Even before I started cooking, I was pretty busy picking up a few language skills. But yes, I have been fortunate enough to whip up dishes all around the globe. And each place had its own magic. If I have to pick up two favorites, Dubai holds a special place in my heart. It's where I had my first international assignment. Spain, however, is a close second, where I was lucky to host a pop-up restaurant 
I had the chance to sharpen my culinary skills. In Spain, I found myself in a kitchen surrounded by ingredients such as sesa peach PGI, blue cheese PDO, and walnuts PDO. It was a melting pot of flavors and super amazing techniques that really expanded my horizons while also making me realize that no matter where I went, my heart truly belonged to India. That's the magic of our country. It continues to cast its spell no matter where you go. With time, how has the exposure to international and European perspective changed the way you cook Indian food? Sam, being in the midst of international and European culinary styles has only made my love affair with Indian cuisine a lot stronger. You see the addition of European ingredients elevates every Indian dish. The European Union has these incredible standards for everything. From fruits and vegetables to jams, it's like they take the art of food to a whole new plethora, just like India does. And now, you won't believe the excitement that EU ingredients bring into India. People are getting super curious and are open to trying hatke dishes. It's like a culinary revolution. In fact, now, chefs are having fun experimenting with ingredients like Brie de Mo, PDO from France, Ilya Kalamata PDO from Greece, Sherry Vinegar PDO from Spain, Peach Preserve from France and more. It's great how the Indian palate is evolving and I'm here for it. You spoke about how European ingredients are making waves in India. Which ones do you use to create unique dishes? Samir, it's about quality versus quantity. I enjoy cooking with some of the finest, freshest ingredients that the European Union has to offer. Each ingredient carries its own unique heritage, contributing to the rich flavors in my dishes. Some of these include the apples from Italy. And what I truly love about it is how sweet, aromatic and succulent it is. This makes it a perfect addition to both savory and sweet dishes. My one such creation, apple tart with lavender honey drizzle, is a dessert that combines the natural sweetness of apples with a buttery, flaky crust enhanced by a lavender-infused honey drizzle. Another interesting ingredient would be grilled peppers from Italy. It is unique because its complexity adds depth to the sauces and when caramelized, it imparts a sweet intensity that elevates the overall dining experience. We created a grilled pepper tapenade and goat cheese souffle which has rich and robust flavors and trust me Sam, when I say this, it was an instant hit. Also Sam, I really relish vegetables. The Canino green asparagus from Italy with a PGI label is another favorite on my list. A simple ingredient, it's super versatile and I enjoy preparing a creamy asparagus risotto. Its subtle comforting flavors instantly remind me of being at home. What makes these ingredients even better is their authenticity guaranteed by a PGI or PDO label. These come with a stamp of quality protecting their unique characteristics linked to their geographical origin and traditional know-how. Where the ingredients come from makes all the difference. Also, Chef, we've seen a shift in people's perspective where they have become mindful of the source where the produce has grown. Do you think this is a trend that will continue to grow in the coming years in India? Sam, it's truly fascinating to witness the evolving perspective of people, not just in Europe, but globally. The European Union has been leading the way in prioritizing the traceability of every product, which means that in any stage of production, meat or vegetables can be traced back to the farms that they are grown in, ensuring both the well-being of the animals, the environment and the health of the consumers. Now in India, this awareness is growing noticeably. People are becoming more conscious about their food sources. And I believe this trend will only grow in the upcoming years. Isn't it fascinating to witness today's generation genuinely care about the sustainability factor of the products they consume? It's truly incredible to see today's generation caring so much about the sustainability of what they eat. Take the farm to fork strategy by the European Union, for instance. It's a groundbreaking move promoting greener food production and processing more sustainable diets and less food waste. And guess what? It's not just about a European affair. 
the youth in India are fully on board. They are slowly understanding that what is good for the environment is equally good for them. This positive wave towards mindful and sustainable choices is not just transforming our plates. It's creating a ripple effect. What are the three practices you think chefs can adopt to contribute to a more sustainable environment? Firstly, focusing on sourcing ingredients grown with fewer pesticides, less fertilizer use, and minimal antibiotics in the meat. It is not only beneficial for the environment, but also aligns with the recommendations from the European Union. Secondly, get creative with kitchen discards and turn them into delightful delicacies. For example, fry potato peels and drizzle them with balsamic vinegar, which has a PGI level, to create an interesting snack. You can also use the leftover onion peels, preheat them in the oven, grind them and mix it with salt and use it for the seasoning of various dishes. Furthermore, share this story behind your sustainable practices with the diners. Make it an engaging experience for diners because it is more than just a meal. Because I believe it's also very important to respect the amazing quality produce we get. Which brings me to my next question. Great sustainable practices lead to availability of high quality produce. How do you think the European Union is championing the cause? The European Union is making big strides in championing sustainability. Their strategy focuses on greener food production, processing and consumption. What is impressive is that EU foods and drinks made from sustainable practices are the result of centuries of traditional farming practices combined with cutting-edge innovations in agriculture. These old-school farming techniques are crucial when growing authentic variation of fruits and vegetables which boast PGI and PDO levels. It's about creating a food ecosystem that have less impact on the planet and of course our health. I couldn't agree more. I'm sure there are countless moments as a chef where European ingredients tempt you to create novel recipes. If you're hosting friends and family for dinner, what are some of the dishes that you'll whip up? I love whipping up interesting dishes. Cheese is one of my absolute favorite European ingredients. I use Gamonedo cheese from Spain and pair it with cabbage from Croatia, which has a PDO level, to create lip-smacking spring rolls. Another delightful ingredient I love is raspberries from Italy, which is perfect for a lovely chutney that goes as a delightful side dish. Now to keep things light for dessert, I opt for rusk from Greece, which has a PGI label. I top it with black cherry fruit spread from Austria, add fruits, add finish it off with little crumble of Danish white cheese from Denmark to make the most lip-smacking rusk bite. Samir, I bet, just talking about it makes me want to go back and start cooking already. Can we join the party then? Sometimes what happens while cooking is some flavors become overwhelming. Sometimes the dishes become too sweet. Sometimes they become too salty. Now tell us what are the three must-have European ingredients in every kitchen which are great for situations like these. Sam, it's truly an incredible skill to balance out all the flavors in a dish. And I believe many home chefs already do a fantastic job. Sam. I have a few secret European ingredients that I swear by. Franconian green kernel from Germany with a PDO level. This can be used to create a dressing that quickly tones down very pungent flavors. Then there's a type of butter from Denmark, capable of elevating the simple dish and giving it a rich texture. Lastly, this special kind of plum from Portugal works wonders for those lovely moments when your dish becomes too salty. These ingredients are my go-to and I can't recommend them enough for bringing out the best in your culinary creations. Tell me, what's the secret sauce behind being a great chef? I truly believe that cooking is an art and we are all artists. It's such a colorful world to be a part of where every day promises an exciting start for our lovely senses. So for me at least, I try to soak up this feeling every day, enjoy every moment, and I always have fun with the process of 
creating those amazing mouthful tasty recipes that's so true to be able to have fun while you're at work it's a different kind of satisfaction and we are glad that you shared this with us and the viewers thank you so much chef nishant for your valuable time and for sharing intriguing insights sam i had lot of fun too thank you for inviting me it was lovely catching up with you pleasure was all mine